A biotech company just bought extinct wolves back from the dead. They also made woolly mice by adding mammoth genes into regular mice. They're aiming to create a real woolly mammoth by 2028. And just recently in China, the first Arctic wolf clone was made. This is what happened when scientists tried to clone extinct animals. Colossal Biosciences, a Dallas biotech founded in 2021 by George Church and Ben Lamb, actually brought the dire wolf back from extinction. They took ancient DNA, one sample about 13,000 years old, the other around 72,000, identified about 20 genes that gave the ancient wolves their larger skulls, stronger bones, lighter fur, more muscular legs, and then they used CRISPR to edit those into modern gray wolf cells. They cloned those edited cells via what's called somatic cell nuclear transfer, transferring the edited cells into dog embryos, which were carried by domestic dogs. Romulus and Remus arrived in October of 2024 and Khaleesi in January of 2025. They were about as close to actual living dire wolves as they could be. They live in a 2,000 acre Texas preserve with 10 foot zoo grade fencing, cameras, drones, vets, care staff, a storm shelter. And Colossal calls it functional de-extinction because they're not true dire wolves. They're wolves with more ancient type traits designed to fill the same role in the wild. They're not Jurassic Park level clones, but I mean, they're pretty damn close. Colossal Biosciences also gave us what they call the woolly mouse this year. Scientists compared DNA from around 121 mammoths and elephants, some fossils more than a million years old, to find out which genes made mammoths suited for cold. They picked seven genes responsible for fur length, texture, color, fat storage, and then used CRISPR to edit them into regular lab mice. And the result was mice with long, wavy, golden fur and extra fat storage. In under a year, they had 38 of these woolly mice. Now, you can see where this is going. What we really want are mammoths. So why start with mice? Well, they reproduce quickly, about a 20-day pregnancy. So Colossal can test if the edits work in a live animal before trying them in larger species. The next step is Asian elephants, whose DNA matches mammoths 99.6%. They plan to edit 65 to 85 mammoth traits into elephant embryos, then implant them into pregnant elephants. Our goal is to have an actual mammoth calf by 2028. Maya was born on June 10th, 2022. She's the world's first cloned Arctic wolf. The team behind it was Synogene, a biotech company in Beijing and they pulled it off using skin cells from a wild arctic wolf that had died. They took that DNA and basically swapped the nucleus from the wolf cell into an egg cell that had its own DNA removed, and then they created the embryos. They implanted those embryos into beagle dogs, and it worked. Maya came out healthy. She's not de-extinct since Arctic wolves still exist in the wild, but this was a huge moment for cloning endangered animals. These wolves live in brutal, frozen environments, and their numbers are starting to shrink because of habitat loss and climate change. But Maya proves we've reached a point where cloning can realistically help endangered species from disappearing completely. The Tasmanian tiger, also called the thylacine, looked kind of like a skinny wolf with stripes on its back, but it wasn't a wolf at all. It was a marsupial, basically a mammal that carries its babies in a pouch, like a kangaroo. These things used to roam Australia, but after years of hunting and habitat loss, the last known one died at Hobart Zoo in 1936. For a long time, that was the end of the story but now scientists are trying to bring it back. In 2017, a group in Australia managed to sequence the thylacine's DNA using bits from old museum specimens. Then they started editing the DNA of the thylacine's closest living relatives, like the Tasmanian devil, to try and build a working embryo. They're using CRISPR to swap in thylacine traits, hoping to eventually grow one either in a surrogate animal or maybe even an artificial womb. Passenger pigeons used to be everywhere in North America, millions of them flying in huge flocks. They'd roost in forests so thick that branches would break and drop tons of pigeon droppings, which is gross, but it actually helped fertilize the soil. By 1914, they were totally wiped out, thanks to overhunting and habitat loss. But now, scientists are trying to bring them back by using DNA from museum specimens and editing that into their closest living relative, 
the band-tailed pigeon. Because band-tailed DNA isn't identical, this would create a hybrid. Not a perfect passenger pigeon, but it would be about as close as you can get. They also tested how reintroducing these birds could affect forests. For example, researchers in Michigan simulated how a massive flock might disturb the trees, breaking branches, letting light in, changing the soil, in order to see if these birds would actually be helping anything. Right now, the team has band-tailed pigeons with CRISPR gene editing tools built in so that the edits can be passed to their offspring. And they're aiming to hatch the first passenger pigeon-like chicks around 2029, before eventually testing releases back into the wild. The Pyrenean ibex, also called the Bucardo, was a wild mountain goat that lived in the Pyrenees Mountains between Spain and France. It was extinct in 2000, when the last known female, named Celia, died after getting caught under a fallen tree. But scientists were not ready to give up on the species. In 2003, researchers used frozen skin samples from Celia to try cloning her. They took DNA from those samples, inserted it into goat eggs, and implanted the embryos into domestic goat surrogates. And for a brief moment, it worked. The cloned ibex was born, the first time an extinct animal had been brought back to life. But the clone only survived about seven minutes. It had really bad lung problems. So technically, the Pyrenean ibex went extinct two times. But the experiment was not a total failure. It proved cloning was possible. It just had to be perfected. The northern white rhino was nearly extinct by 2018. There were only two left in the world, and they were both female. So it really looked like this was it. But scientists in Kenya, along with members of the Leibniz Institute for Zoo and Wildlife Research in Germany, and the San Diego Zoo's Frozen Zoo collected eggs from the two surviving females and used frozen sperm from males that had already died. The plan is to make embryos in the lab and implant them into southern white rhino females who can act as surrogate moms. That way the babies would be northern white rhinos just born from a closely related species. The process is not easy though. Rhinos have really long pregnancies, around 16 months, and getting in vitro fertilization to work in rhinos is super tricky. But the team's already made some healthy embryos and now they're focused on getting one of them to actually develop into a living calf. If this works, the northern white rhino would go from being basically extinct to having a real chance at survival again. It's a long road, but it's probably the species only chance. Next up, we have Dolly the sheep. Now, obviously sheep aren't extinct, but this was the first mammal cloned from an actual adult cell. This changed everything. Back in 1996, scientists took a cell from a fin dorset sheep and transferred its nucleus into an egg cell that had its own DNA removed. This egg was then implanted into a surrogate sheep and out came Dolly, the world's first cloned mammal. She wasn't the first animal cloned overall, but cloning from an adult cell showed that mature cells could be sorta reprogrammed to develop into an entire animal. Dolly lived for six years, had six lambs. Cloning was now more than just science fiction. By the late 80s, black-footed ferrets were basically extinct in the wild. Luckily, a small group was found in Wyoming in 1981, and conservationists captured some to start breeding them in captivity. But since the population was so small, the ferrets' genes were too similar. Too much mixing of similar genes is obviously not a good thing. There needs to be some variation in there. So in 2020, the group Revive and Restore cloned a ferret named Elizabeth Ann to help fix this, using frozen cells from a wild ferret. Elizabeth Ann was born healthy and released back into the wild to add some new genetic variety into the ferret population. The Chevelsky's horse is the last truly wild horse species on Earth. Wild meaning it was never domesticated. These horses used to roam the steppes of Central Asia, but by the late 60s, they were pretty much mostly wiped out. The main reasons were overhunting, plus fences and farms pushing them out of their habitats. After that, the only Chevelsky's horses left were stuck in zoos and breeding programs. But in 2020, scientists used frozen tissue from a stallion named Kaporovic, stored for 40 years in a frozen zoo, to clone a healthy baby named Kurt in Texas. A few years later, they cloned Kurt's genetic twin, Ollie. These clones brought fresh genes into the very small population, and now these horses are being released back into the wild. This is probably the most successful de-extinction case in history, hopefully 
not the last. I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.